This is the Go Green edition of Green is Good here in downtown Seattle. We're so honored to have with us today Jacqueline Drumheller. She's the sustainability manager for Alaska Airlines. Welcome to Green is Good, Jacqueline. Thank you so much, John. This is a this is a great conference. I'm having a lot of fun already. Well, we're so happy you came on the show. You're our first, after a thousand guests, you're our first airline to come on Green is Good. That is awesome. I'm first so happy airline. about that. We're so happy. We're so honored. <laughs> and before we talk, you know, get talking about your great airline that you work with. Can you share a little bit about your background? How did you get interested in sustainability and, and eventually join Alaska Airlines and have now this great title and important role of sustainability manager? Well, that's sort of a long sorted tale, but um, <laughs> uh, I pretty much didn't know what I wanted to do when I was in college, so I changed my, I think I'm the only person that took seven and a half years to get a bachelor's degree because I changed my major from art to business to biology, and I was going to be a veterinarian of all things, but alas, I didn't have the parental support or the grades or, or the money to go to vet school. So uh, I got my degree and I sat down with the LA Times, you know, back in when they printed Help Wanted ads on paper and put them in the news. And I uh, started going down the list going, well, let's see, biologist. Oh, shoot, nobody in LA is hiring biologists this week. Mm, let's keep going down alphabetical order. Oh, look, E, environmental. Oh. That sounds cool. I'll be saving whales and stuff. Awesome. So uh, I went in and interviewed with this guy, and we just talked about our favorite restaurants for two hours. And I went home. There was a message on my machine saying, you're hired to show up for work Monday morning. I had no idea what they did. I got there. They were a hazardous waste disposal contract handling all the military hazardous waste in Southern California. Wow. So I slugged waste for the next three years and eventually uh, moved up. Actually, I met my husband at a hazardous waste disposal facility. Mm, it's it better than a, a bar. Yeah, it's better than a bar. <laughs> Actually, Not it's many kinda, people can say that, probably. You know, the people I hang, hang out with, uh, quite a few of them can say it, which is kind of funny. <laughs> That's funny. But, um, so you met your hu husband there. Yes. And how long did you work in that industry? About three years. Okay. And I moved up here to be closer to him, because this is where I met him. And uh, So you moved to Seattle. Yes. So it was like 20 years ago. Wow. And uh, I worked in consulting and engineering for a while. Trip of, you know, typical stuff, removing tanks and conducting soil investigations and things like that. And I saw the opening for a job at Alaska Airlines, and I thought, cool, flight benefits, right? <laughs> I have my whole family is in Southern California. This is where I want to work. I want to work for this airline. And I went in there, and uh, it was an environmental compliance job, and I was tank girl. We had an environmental deadline, a regulatory deadline, way back in 1998, that every single underground storage tank had to be upgraded or removed by December 22nd. So for the next two years, I went around the state of Alaska removing underground storage tanks. Wow. And um, eventually, over the last 17 years, I've been employed there since I was 12, uh, over the last <laughs> 17 years, I um, started seeing the value of creating a sustainability program there, and I was, I was really frustrated. It was just a, a compliance job at the time, handling environmental rules and regulations. But there was enough like-minded people there that we started sort of getting together and forming a voluntary green team. Wow. <clears throat> and um, we kicked off some projects. We got the CEO's approval. I think we... Uh, I think I knocked him down in the hallway, it stood on his chest and pointed at him, yelled at him for a while, and I didn't get fired. And he actually, <laughs> he actually had got a twinkle in his eye at some point, and it wasn't for lack of oxygen, and uh, said, that sounds very interesting. And I used that line and said, uh, Bill Ayer is really interested in this project. Said, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> got everybody motivated after that. <laughs> got everybody motivated. So one of our first projects was our in-flight recycling. Um, on the aircraft. And, and we how many years ago was that? Give that us was a about 2008. Okay. So, so it's taken a while to get to the point where it was, and my job slowly transitioned from being 100% environmental compliance to 100% sustainability every year. A little bit 10% more sustainability and less compliance. But that's, but that's part of what sustainability is anyway, isn't it, Jacqueline? It's a journey anyway. Oh, definitely. So, I mean, you have to start somewhere. So talk a little bit about 2008. What you, you said recycling on the flights? On the flights, I think, you know, that that time we were the 13th largest carrier, and now we're the 6th largest carrier, wow. and we jumped over nobody, you know, because I think, well, I think we're the 6th right now, depending on who's merged <laughs> or who's gone out of business, right? And um, Still, so it's nice to be number 6 instead of 13, that's great. Yeah, but, it, you know, it's so frustrating to see how 
all this waste on the aircraft doesn't have any opportunity for recycling. You know, in our homes, we recycle right. our bottles We're and thinking. our cans and our paper. Our passengers live in Seattle and Pacific Northwest. They're doing it at home. Our employees are all based in Seattle and Portland and around the Pacific Northwest for the most part. And they're recycling. Why can't we do it on the planes? And there was a lot of good reasons we couldn't, but gosh darn it, we were going to try and find a solution for that. And sort of a ragtag group of green team people started learning more about it and trying some things. And it eventually evolved to where it is today. It's now a, it's a service standard, our flight, that's what's expected of the flight attendants. We have a goal around reducing our landfill waste by 70% over the next five years. Wow. And we're getting about 80%, a little over 80% of all of the bottles, paper, cups, cans, all the recyclables commingled at every single place where we have a flight kitchen. So any place we're taking waste off the plane, it's going to a recycling collection area. So talk a little bit about, you know, one of, this is a very instructive because Sometimes we have guests that come on and say they took over uh, a green program or sustain. You created this at Alaska Airlines from scratch. How did you, besides saying, Bill said this is very interesting, this is... That's a great um, line, yeah. How did, you, how did you bring a, a, the team together and how big is the team today? You know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, it wasn't just me. It yeah. was it was our it was our core team, and there's still some of the original members there who are just as passionate, like our catering manager, who's just a, as passionate about recycling and making improvements. Um, so, I think you know, just having those people, being able to collude with them and get together with them, and all focused on the same thing, even though it's not our day job, has its own energy. Right. Right. Um, and we were fortunate to have people on our team who never call it quits. Like, it's, it has a lot of determination and are willing to take some risks. I mean, you know, so much of this stuff was just like, you do it. Beg 2008, for sure. Yeah, beg forgiveness later, right? That's right, right. Just yeah, so. I mean, whatever underhanded tactic that we could get to push the envelope and move the ball forward is what we had to take. It had to be. Had to be quick, down, dirty, and easy. That's, so that's, that's why a lot of the, oh, Bill Air is interested in this project kind of stuff came along. Oh, really? You know, or I think at some point it's embarrassing. We even changed the company's value statement without asking permission, just like added the words in the environment in there, you know, kind of thing. And, oh, well, I guess somebody important must have wanted it done that way, you know. That's awesome. So, so for our audience members that just joined us, we've got Jacqueline Drumheller. She's a sustainability manager of Alaska Airlines. To learn more about Alaska, go to www.alaskaair.com. It's also the Airlines of Electronic Recyclers International. When we fly from Fresno to Seattle, Washington, it's a great airline. Jacqueline, talk a little bit now about the journey, 2008 to today. How did you evolve this? And were you doing this from the ground up or did you have other airlines or other paradigms that you were borrowing from? So, um, it was essentially from the ground up. I mean, some things like our fuel conservation um, strategies, okay. that's always been part of us. We looked at it as a money saving strategy okay. because fuel is somewhere, you know, one of our highest costs traditionally. Um, so we have a lot of incentive to not use fuel. We don't want to use fuel. We try and limit as anything we can do to not use fuel is a good thing for us. So let's pause right there. So being green, being sustainable could be very good for the bottom line, such as in fuel conservation. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. And then the other things like the in-flight recycling and uh, some of our energy conservation and our electric vehicle fleet initiatives, those, you know, as far as the journey is concerned, we started off with the green team. We had those first seven projects or so, and um, we were just relying on getting visibility, um, getting things done quickly and, and, and getting some attention around them. And we know we knew that our sister carrier, Horizon Air, had been recycling for a long time. I think they started recycling in the late 80s as part of some campaign to save aluminum can money for a sick flight attendant, like a cancer patient or something. Right. And we always knew they did a great job, and then sort of, but wait a minute, how can we talk about this great job if we don't measure what we're doing? And so we thought, yeah, let's, uh, let's learn. You know, we had some college intern help us out and show us how to weigh and measure our garbage that was coming off of our flights. And they were like, holy cow, Horizon's recycling two-thirds of all of their garbage. I mean, we always knew they were a great job, but this is, we have numbers now. This is a kick-ass, sorry, can I say that? Kick-ass job. Of course. Okay. 
Absolutely. <laughs> this is great. So, uh, this is amazing. And I was telling a friend about it. She said, you know, you should apply for some sort of an award. And I'm like, okay. So I filled out some paperwork. I sent it in. That year we won uh, 2010, I believe. It was Washington State Recycling Association Recycler of the Year for a big business. Yeah. And it was such a feel-good event. And it really gave that kind of buzz to everybody. You know, they needed that incentive, that yeah. pat on the back, that external recognition, and, and having some we numbers to prove something. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we, we were so proud of the award. We were just displaying it everywhere and sharing it with everybody and tooting our horn internally about it. And then the president of Alaska, my, the other carrier that I work for, is kind of like, well, Horizon got an award for recycling. How come we don't have an award for recycling? Well, Brad, it's because we, we're, we're, we're behind our sister carrier. <laughs> you know, how do I say this? I think we should be recycling 100%. I'm like, oh, that's a stretch goal. Okay, you know. So it's those little things where you keep getting recognition, you keep communicating about it, you get people excited about it, you start integrating it into the culture, the way we think of ourselves, you know. Yep. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's taken a long time to get to where we are now, and we've had a lot of hiccups along the way. But with certain programs, like what I was saying about our in-flight recycling program, sure. we had so much pushback issues and things that came up, but we got to the point where now everybody's like, okay, this is part of what Alaska Airlines does. This is what our customers expect of us. This is what differentiates us. This is, I'm not gonna fight anymore. We're doing it, kind of thing. And That's awesome. yeah, so it takes a while, and it's hard to describe that that pathway there. But I think um, the persistence and the patience really pays off in those examples. We're going to come back to Alaska in a little while, but we're here today at the Go Green Conference. Why is it important for you to be here today? What are you doing here today, and how are you highlighting Alaska Air's great sustainability program right now at this conference? Oh well. Um, my boss, Joe Sprague, the Senior Vice President of External Relations and Corporate Communications, was a keynote speaker just a few minutes ago. Okay. And we're sponsoring the event, which means we have a raffle later on. Oh, I have my okay. raffle ticket. They gave me a raffle ticket. I hope I win. Okay. <laughs> um, for a pair of tickets, which is really cool because today we just announced that we're going to be flying to Costa Rica. We just made the announcement. That's awesome. And, uh, I'm really psyched about that. It's Costa Rica directly from where? LA. LA. LA, Costa Rica. Yep. Wonderful. You heard it here first today on Green is Good. <laughs> Alaska Air to Costa Rica. That's right. www.alaskaair.com. Go there and book your tickets right. now. Right. I can't wait. So, um, uh, yeah, so we, we're trying to communicate more. And we, it's one of those things we never really tooted our horn that much in the past. And we're, we're kind of getting up to that point where we do need to toot our horn. People do need to be engaged. Our passengers need to know that not air, all airlines are the same, that we share their right. values, that, um, that they can help us too by packing light and not putting their napkin in their cup and things like that. I want to go back to that, you know, because we are a solutions-based uh, program. We want to give solutions to our audience. But go talk a little bit about tuning your own horn. That's why we want people like you and brands like you to come on this show and share that with your, our audience. We've done that for seven years. What are you most proud of in this journey of sustainability to Alaska Air? What one or two programs can you point to to say, wow, we got that done and that looked like the biggest mountain, highest mountain to climb? Um, one of them I've already talked about. And yeah. That's our in-flight recycling yeah. program. And I'm, I'm proud of that because it was a grassroots right. effort of impassioned right. employees. And that, and we had the ability and flexibility in the culture at our company to do that without yeah. nobody you know, putting us down or, yeah. you know, that, okay, do you want to in-flight recycle? Give it a go, you know. Right. But then the other thing I'm really proud of is everything we've done in fuel conservation with, with our aircraft. That's great. And um, you don't always realize this. I mean, when you're booking a flight on Expedia or whatever and you find the cheapest airline that pops up despite the fact they spend that two hours in Cleveland or something like that. Right. Um, I know people make purchasing decisions for a lot of products and services based on a social or environmental reputation of the organization. That's right. But maybe they don't take environmental considerations with airlines because they think they're all the same. They don't realize that they're different. So there's a study that comes out every year by the International Council on Clean Transportation. They're a nonprofit organization. And they rank airlines according to fuel efficiency. And I'm really proud to say that we've come out number one for four years in a row. 
Wow. We tied for third place this last year, though, but I'm, we're going to pull out a loan next year. I know we are. But it's because of all the improvements that we've made. And you look at the list and you see that there's a huge range of fuel efficiency on all these airlines. Mm. And the bottom of the list, I won't say their name, but they're every single passenger mile they fly uses 33% more fuel than one of our passenger miles. And why? Because they have a different approach. I mean, every airline has a pretty razor-thin margins and has a hard time staying afloat. That's why we're the sixth largest carrier instead of the 13th largest carrier. Right. But um, some airlines invest in a less expensive fleet, so they'll buy like used MD-80s or something like that on pennies on the dollar instead of investing in brand new fuel-efficient aircraft uh. instead. So their capital costs are way down, but their operating costs are way up. You know, For us, it's always been about what's the most fuel-efficient airplane we can have, how do we fly it more efficiently. Um, we developed some technology in the 90s as a way of flying in and out of uh, the great state of Alaska called required navigation performance. It allows us to shave miles off every route because we can use satellite-based navigation to get there and not have to fly sort of convoluted routes around mountains or uh, you know have a take off in a different direction right. because there's a navigation shadow of some kind or something like that. And, uh, and we're actually starting to use it as of uh, last summer to apply more strategic approaches into um, SeaTac Airport here, called the Greener wow. Skies Program. So instead of doing this, you know, kind of, I mean, you know, the worst part of any flight is when? The landing. Well, and then the time you're stuck in the airplane waiting to get off the bloody plane. Oh, everybody, yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, and you can't even get to the gate. <laughs> and then, so I'm sitting in the plane, and I'm looking out the window, and I'm like, oh, there's Seattle. There's yeah. my home. Right. Oh, wait a minute, we got to fly to Canada first and turn around and then land, Whoa. right? I mean, that's what, it's not really Canada, but it right. seems that way. I understand. Right. That's the worst moment when you fly right. by your house. And because <laughs> you just want to get off the plane. That's right. And so, um, so what we do instead with the, with the navigation is we can fly a, a more direct route. We don't have to fly to Bellingham and turn back. We can glide into the airport, right, instead of just doing this power up, power down thing. And by doing that, um, probably saves us 60 gallons of fuel every time we approach the airport for every wow. single flight. And if all the carriers that had this navigation um, technology used it, it's probably about 2.1 million gallons of fuel a year just saved on these approaches coming into SeaTac. So not only have you invested in the navigation technology, which makes you more fuel efficient, you've also on the CapEx invested in better equipment, so you're more fuel efficient. So you're number one now in fuel efficiency? Yes, we are. Number one, Alaska Air. If you want to be the greenest and fly the greenest, number one, Alaska Air. Talk a little bit about sustainability. Is there any outside organization yet that compares airlines on other sustainable behavior besides fuel efficiency? Or we haven't gotten to that point in the sustainability evolution revolution yet? Um, you know, there is a lot of different organizations that compare rank airlines on their greenness. And okay. they all use different... Metrics. Yeah, and it's, and it's subjective. And uh, yeah, this this one by the ICCT, I like them because they have some science behind it. And, uh, Got it. Yeah, For our, you, we want to leave our uh, listeners with a couple other uh, tips from you. Okay. How, how can they be more green on any airline that they're flying how can, they, how can their behavior be better to make the, the flight and the, and the whole process of traveling by air greener? That is an excellent question. So I think, and I try and be mindful of this when I'm getting ready to go on a flight, is if you pack light, for example. I think we calculated that if every single one of our passengers packed just like two pounds less in their suitcase, like maybe that extra set of boots or something wow. like that, um, we'd save something like... I'm not sure I've got the right number, but it's about like around 10 million gallons of fuel a year. Whoa. And um, and you're thinking about you know using a reusable water bottle and filling it up at the airport, um, post security of course, right? right? And uh, you know so you don't have to get the water bottles or the cups on the plane. Um, and then when I always make t people take the pledge when they say they fly Alaska. I make them say, go ahead, you're going to pledge. Okay. I promise. I promise. Never to shove the pretzel package or the napkin into my Coke can. I promise never to shove the pretzel package or napkin into this. Flight. Right. That way the flight attendant can there put you. it in the recycle, can, you know, wow. right? Keep them separate so we can get that can or that cup or that bottle off to a recycling facility instead of taking it to the landfill. So going back to keeping it 
keeping the streams to be recycled clean and therefore more recyclable. Right. That's a great pledge. That's a great pledge. <laughs> For our students out there, we have tons of entrepreneurs in the United States and around the world that are our audience at Green is Good. How do they become the next Jacqueline Drumheller? Oh, in terms boy. of their education, in terms of how to, I mean, you know, give, give them a little bit of uh, your, some of your pearls of wisdom on, on, uh, on the journey now. I don't know that I'd want them to be the next Jacqueline from Pillar, oh, but on. You're being I humble. want them to be better than that. Oh. Um, oh, I'm really excited. I get a lot of college students ask yeah. me that all the time. It's really exciting to see yeah, the younger generation and how articulate and impassioned and professional they are. I don't even remember being all that professional and savvy when I was that age, but um, I think about me and how I fit in this position well, and I don't know that it's necessarily that I have a lot of technical skills. I don't think that was it. I certainly can't name any technical skills that I have. But I think it's, uh, I think Bob Langer, the former director of CSR at McDonald's, uh, said that it's the three P's. It's a persistence, passion, and patience. And I think that's really true. It's having so sort of a broad skills, a good communication skills, broad skills, and uh, systems thinking approach where you can pull in a whole bunch of information from a lot of places and plan strategically and methodically and make the case. And so yeah, the three Ps. And I think too is a lot of people want my job. They don't, you know, do you want my job? I think you want a job where you can start something perhaps. Those entrepreneurs out there, you create did, it you yourself. This. You yeah, you. I'm you know, you don't want to step into my job. You want to go out there and find who isn't doing it yet and get it going over there. That's great advice. Any final thoughts for our audience before we uh, sign off today? No, thank you for having me. This oh, is, we're so uh, honored to have you. And for our listeners out there, uh, Alaska Airlines, it's the number one fuel-efficient airline out there. So you can go to their site and book your tickets now, www.alaskaair.com. And from L.A., now flying to Costa Rica, Jacqueline Drumheller. You are an inspiring leader and a sustainability superstar and truly living proof that green is good. <laughs>